Hi there. Welcome back to the second part of our game asset creation series. In this part we will do the UV unwrapping and texturing. So let's get started. We have to make two meshes, low poly model and a high poly model, so that we can bake textures from the high resolution mesh. Let's put this mesh to a new layer and name it, low poly. And then right click on the layer and select duplicate collect. Name this, high poly. Let's hide the low poly for now, by clicking on this icon. So on this mesh we will do the high poly stuff, like sculpting, adding details and make smooth surfaces. So I am adding a subdivision modifier. And set the value to 2. Let's separate each piece by hitting P, and then by loose parts. Now select this top part, add edge loops to tighten edges. At this stage you have full freedom to add as many edge loops as your PC can handle. I am tightening all edges by using edge loops. Hit numpad slash for the solo view mode. Don't feel that you are destroying the edge flow of the model, because this model is only being used to bake textures. Now let's focus on this part. For this part, I want to do some sculpting. So I am removing the subdivision modifier, and add a multirus modifier. A multirus modifier allow us to work on subdivided polygons, and also preserve the low poly mesh. I am going with two subdivisions, now go to the sculpting mode. Now start sculpting your mesh, I am referring these references. I am just sculpting some bumps and smoothness, to break the uniformity of the object. Tightening these edges as well. Let's do one thing. Rotate the pin ring to a 90 degree angle, to make him stay away from the mesh itself, because it can cause problems in texture baking. So in low poly mesh, let's just separate the ring from the mesh. And now enable the high poly layer also, and select both the rings and rotate it. You have to keep this in mind that you are rotating both rings, the low poly and high poly. You can add other details which you want on this high poly mesh.
Before we start unwrapping, let's know some basics. To texture anything in 3D we have to unwrap the object. So that we can use image textures on it. To unwrap anything in Blender, we have to mark seams on the object. These seams will tell Blender to unwrap the object. Seams is like cuts in the mesh to unfold it. It is like peeling an orange and then flatten it on a surface. Some important points, make sure your seams are in those areas which is not much visible. Try to make less seams as possible to unwrap the object. Try to separate those parts with seams first, which are making problems in unwrapping. Now let's do the UV unwrapping process. Select your low poly mesh. I am first creating seams for this middle body. This is how I want to unwrap this part. So select one face, then hit L to select all its faces, and then hit Ctrl I to inverse the selection and hide the mesh. Let's first isolate this middle circle with seams, select all the edges around it and hit Ctrl E, then mark seams. Now hide this middle circle, we will unwrap the whole object later. To unwrap this middle body, we have to make the seams at a point where it will not be visible. I will make the seam under this lever part. So hide the lever. Locate the lever's position and mark seam on the body. Because this face not has the edge flow, I will cut the face from middle for my seam. Now I am moving to the ring. To unwrap the ring, first separate the circle ends with seams. Now hide these circles. And now you can add the seams in the middle. So that it can unwrap like cylinder projection. Now it's time for this part. Remember, make seams only in those areas, which are hidden or not much visible. I am simply marking seams like this, for unwrapping. Because this part is slightly complex, I am unwrapping this part only, to check the UVs. When done, go to the other part. For this part, I am simply separating it into two parts, front and back with seams. Now just quickly marking seams on the remaining parts. Now every seam is marked. To check our unwrapping, I am making a simple material, create an emission shader, and add a new texture with 2048 into 2048 resolution, select color UVs, and hit OK. Now the only thing you have to do is, hit U and then unwrap. Now you can see the texture by going to the material preview mode. Now check these boxes, try to analyze if it has any artifacts, or as the boxes has dissimilar size. As you can see, the middle ring part has no seams. That's why it has unwrapped like this. 
so mark the seams at here also. And then re-unwrap the object. When you have done the unwrapping, export your models in OBJ format. Select the low poly object and export it by naming low poly. Make sure you had checked selection only. And then select all the parts of the high poly mesh and export that by naming high poly. So now I am in Substance Painter. Let's hit New. Select your low poly mesh from here. And hit OK. This is our low poly mesh as you can see. Now I am going to bake textures from the high resolution mesh. For this go to Texture Settings, and scroll down. Click on Bake Mesh Maps. Set the output size to 4K. Because we want to generate the maps in 4K. You can see this, High Definition Meshes? You have to add your high resolution mesh here. I am going to uncheck ID here, because I didn't set that. Let's set the max front and rear distance to 0.015. And hit bake. It will take some time, according to your machine. It's baked, hit OK. First of all we will work on the middle pineapple part. Let's add a new fill layer, and name it paint. Under color select the appropriate color. So this will be our outer paint color. Now we have to make the edge damages. For this I am adding a preset, called, Iron Old. Now let's make a black mask on the iron layer. Go to the smart masks, and select the dust soft mask. Let's alter some settings. As you can see here, an artifact, we can easily clean it by adding a paint layer and set it to black, and paint the area. As you can see, there is some very rough dust under these boxes. We have to make that. Let's again add the iron old. Add a fill layer under the folder. Call it roughness. You can go to roughness preview to show roughness map of the object. And let's uncheck all the other channels other than roughness. Increase the roughness value. There is also a lighter color inside it. So we add a new fill layer just above the iron layer. And let's uncheck all the parameters other than color. Name it color for your ease. Now set the color. I am quickly naming all the groups. As you can see the roughness layer is on top and it is all over the body, we want the roughness only between the boxes. So we add a black mask on the roughness. And again add a pre-smart mask called Dirt Occlusion. Let's adjust the settings, to make it tighter only between the boxes. You can see the roughness layer is only affecting the horizontal gaps not in the vertical, so we will manually paint that with dirt brush. I am giving little bit of positive height on the roughness dirt layer.
I am making the color to white to just for visual purpose. As you can see the white color is full covering the under part. I will paint this on the UV texture view. To correctly paint on it, set the alignment of your brush to UV, and size space to texture. Now remove the white layer on the boxes. Now add back the correct color. I want to add variation to the color, so I am adding another fill layer on top of the existing one. Giving it a lighter color. And now add a mask on the upper layer. I am going with the Dust Smart Mask. Now put all the groups to a new folder and call it Pineapple Body. To assign the material only to the base body, right-click on the layer and add a black mask. Now select this option. And set it to this checkerboard. Now you can able to assign the white color to only a specific UV island in the mask. Just click on the body and it will select the UV island. Now I am going to texture this middle ring part. I am searching a plastic material in the preset of Smart Materials. Let's apply this plastic glossy stain. Same as before create a mask, and select the correct UV island. I am changing this yellow color the red one. Let's add some more details, I am adding a fill layer with a lighter color. Call it edge damage. Make a black mask, and with a good brush, let's paint the edges. Let's also give some roughness and negative height value. You are seeing these artifact lines, you can easily fix this. The time when you had baked the textures. Export baked ambient occlusion, curvature and normal map. Open those maps in Photoshop and clean the artifacts. And when you are done, import all those new maps back to Substance Painter. And now, under texture set settings, replace the ambient, curvature and the normal map. And this will fix the issue. This part is done. I had named this to red part. Let's make this yellow line. Add a fill layer with yellow color. And add a black mask. 
and now left click on the outside of the model and then hold shift and then click the other side, it will make a straight paint line. Do this to cover up the whole area. Now same as we did before, mask this also in the correct UV island. I am putting our fill layer in a new folder. And now add a black mask to it, and add preset mask called Rust. Add an invert filter above it. Just adjust the settings according to your liking. I am giving some mount of height value to the paint as well. Now add another paint layer under the mask and try to remove the perfect shape. and then add a levels adjustment filter and try to contrast these. In order to affect the paint layer, you have to put the level above the paint layer. Now this top part. Same as before, search any best preset and manipulate it according to you liking. I am adding material over another material and try to blend those values which I need. In some case I want the height information of a different material, and, roughness values of a different material, I am trying to combine and make something good. Similarly finish out the parts, here I am speeding up the process. Same as we had done before, just find a good preset and edit it according to your references.
I want to add some random height here, so I'm adding a fill layer uncheck everything except height. Now add a procedural noise texture to the height slot. Change some scale values. The height is very very intense. So I am changing this to height, and lower the height opacity. And finally the materials for the pin ring. Let's lower the roughness because it's too high. Now it's time to add the marking. Import the image as texture. Add a new fill layer and call it marking. And then add a black mask and under the mask add a fill layer. Now add the image to the grayscale slider. Change the projection to planar projection. And now by using the 3D gizmos adjust the marking on the top. Now add an invert filter above the fill. Give some negative height and a color. Now put the whole layer under a new folder. Create a black mask, and select the correct faces for the mask. And if you want to add some details, you can add a paint layer and erase some of the marking. So that's done. Now export all the maps. By going to file and then export the maps. You can change the file type or color bit if you want. From here you can set the export location. Now hit export. So here are our maps exported from Substance Painter. If you are wondering how I can use these maps in Blender, here it is. Add a simple principal shader. And import the maps like, color map, roughness, metallic, and the normal map. Keep in mind you have to use, OpenGL normal map. Just change the color space of normal and roughness maps to non-color data. Now add the color to the color slot, metallic to the metallic slot and roughness to the roughness. For the normal map you have to add another node called normal map. Add the texture to the normal map color slot, and then it to the normal of the principal shader. And congratulations you are done now. So this is it for this tutorial series, I will see you in the next video, please like share and subscribe to my channel, peace.